Hey, it's Ted here. I'm in the diesel lab. I'm going to go over uh, heat exchangers. So that would be the heat exchanger, the after cool, and the oil cooler on this TND 31P. Uh, questions I get from people that own these is, where are the anodes? And they don't have anodes on them from the early years. So I'm going to show you how to backfit anodes into these um, and do a little bit of measuring so you don't destroy the coolers. So let's get started. Okay, your first cooler, this is a heat exchanger, and this is a drain. So you would normally hold this fitting with a wrench and loosen this fitting, and that would drain the raw water out of it. What my recommendation is these get replaced. So we're going to unthread these. They take a 9 16 or 14 millimeter wrench, unthread them. That's the first one that we're going to replace. The second one is going to be the oil cooler, which is right behind this. Well, the second one. Here's the other one that comes off of the heat exchanger. So that's what you're going to remove. And then over on the other side, I'm going to show you the um, after cooler. Okay, here's the after cooler. And on the side of the engine, we come down. And on the very bottom of it here, you can see the actual fitting. Same fitting that's used on the other ones, as you can see. What's nice about these when we used to drain them was you could take a piece of clear hose or rubber hose and you could slip it over the end of this into a container so it doesn't drain all over the place and then break this loose and it would drain all of the seawater or fresh water out of it. So I've loosened this one up and I'm gonna take this one out. And there's the third one. So we got all three of these are all the same and I'm gonna replace those with an anode and a fitting, which is basically a threaded end fitting that the anode goes into. So these are gonna be called pencil anodes or pencil zincs, we call them. Okay, so as not to destroy the cooler, because inside this cooler is the heat exchanger, and it basically allows seawater to go around these tubes, there's a bunch of fins in here, and the air rushes in and runs between those fin tubes and the seawater cools that. So seawater comes in and runs through and comes back out. So what I want to do is I've got a, a short screwdriver here, a flathead screwdriver, and this is actually um, an inch and a half high. Okay, and we're going to see if this will go up before it hits the actual tubes inside. So underneath the after cooler, here's that, that fitting comes out and I've taken a flat little screwdriver. This is exactly an inch and a half thick and just lightly go up there and yes, that will clear in there. Now, I want to know how far up those cooler tubes are. So if I come up with a screwdriver really lightly, all right, and wiggle it back and forth until I feel it hit something, that's the cooler tubes right there. So you can hear that scratching off of them. So I'm going to hold it onto the cooler tube where it touches it and I'm gonna hold the screwdriver and I'm gonna pull it out. Now I'm gonna take it over to the bench and I'm gonna measure this dimension and obviously my anode has to be a lot shorter than that. I don't want it to be the full length because if the anode's too tall, it will smash the tubes in and ruin the heat exchanger. So I'm gonna go measure that and write it down. I'm going to do the same thing on the heat exchanger and on the oil cooler. Okay, here we are on the bottom of the heat exchanger. Here's my fitting. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just bring my screwdriver up until it wiggle it back and forth till I feel it hit the tube. There's the lower tube. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm gonna go measure that and I'm gonna record that dimension and we can't go any further than that. Okay, this is the oil cooler here, all right? And you got your oil filter. You've got your two pressure valves here. And on the end of it here is where that fitting is. That's what I'm gonna remove. So I'm gonna remove that fitting just like I did in the heat exchangers. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the depth to where it hits the tubes inside. And I wanna know the maximum depth that it's gonna hit the tubes so that when I replace this fitting with an anode with a brass fitting that threads in there, that it does not hit the cooler and destroy the cooler. So I'm gonna take that out and I'll measure that one as well. Okay, I can pretty much guess by the, what you see. <clears throat> so I can pretty much come to the evaluation that on the oil cooler, that this end plate is a divider plate. And that divider plate is gonna be the end of the core. 
and that would be about where the tubes would end that run lengthwise through this core. So I can kind of guess that wherever the end of that fitting this oil is oil dipsticks in the way, but from the end of the housing here to that plate right there is probably the maximum dimension that I'm going to be allowed to put a anode in there. I'm going to measure it anyway when I take the tube out and then I'll figure out what that dimension is and then we'll have those three dimensions. Okay, so here's what we got. I measured the three and you know they're all slightly different. One and three quarters, one and a half, two inches. So the smallest one is the magic number. So the furthest I can go into this is you know, one and three quarters of an inch, which means that I'm gonna you know get one that's smaller than that. So I don't want anything further than a half of an inch, inch and a half, should I say. So I don't want anything further than one and a half inches that's going to be from the threads, wherever the threads thread into the housing, to the end of the anode. So if I measure this one, this one is going to be from where the threads are. That one's about one and three quarters of an inch. That's too big. So simple enough, just take this thing and, you know, bring it down to even one and three eighths. You know, make a mark. Take a hacksaw, cut that thing off. Just cut it off real quick. Zinc's real soft. You can cut right through it with a hacksaw real easy. Just modify it, and that way you could put the anodes in there. One last thing is, here's the actual diameter of the fitting, all right? And the inside dimension is typically how these pipe threads, these are all pipe threads, and the inside diameter of the pipe is how it's measured. So confusing enough, this is quarter inch because the inside diameter is quarter inch. This is an uh, uh, anode that might actually thread into this, but it's actually going to be bigger almost than the whole thread size. So obviously you have to have an anode that's smaller than the threads to fit into the housing. Here's a used one with the correct threads, all right? And this one has been modified. It's corroded, but it's one that's been modified from a running engine here. And I'll show you that that dimension where I always go almost to the end of the threads. I want to go right up to where the threads end, you know, here, so I don't have any, you know, if I thread this all the way up to here and it stops, and I'm beyond that inch and three quarters, I'm gonna smash it into the tubes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that that is that dimension. So what I wanna do is take this, and I'm just gonna go up to an inch, so you can kind of see this, all right? So that, that means that at an inch and a half, I'm bottomed out here by the end of that. So this one has been put in a vise, hacksawed off, and that's what's gonna thread into the housing. So we're gonna remove these, which are nice, the drains, and we can replace them with these anodes themselves. Do that they're gonna be small, they'll probably corrode away reasonably fast. So in this application, I would probably want to inspect these halfway through the season. So if the boat up here in the Northeast goes in the water in April, May, somewhere in there, if it's really early, even up to June, um, then halfway through the season, I would say two months, two and a half months. So if you go in in May, June, July, I would say middle of July, you should check that anode. And if it looks like this, it's over half corroded, then you should change it. The other thing is the surface of this is already corroded. So the surface has a coating on it, and that's coating, if it's hard, is not gonna allow the uh, galvanic corrosion to take place to this. So the fitting itself is made of either brass, silicon bronze, probably these are bronze fittings. The housing is silicon bronze, and the tubes are usually cooper nickel. They might be copper and silver solder and older ones. This is an anode, so this is zinc. And uh, this zinc anode is going to be more reactive than this, so it is slowly going to corrode away. If these are corroded to the surface where you, you know, you have a coating, a hard brown coating on them, then I would recommend that you change them. If the size of this becomes less than half of the actual brand new size, you should change them. So I would say for, let's just use $20 a piece. Let's use today's numbers. Say these are $20 a piece and you need to change them twice a year, that's 20, 40, 60 times two, that's $120 worth of anodes, probably a lot less than that, you can buy them online. But when you think about $120 a year versus 
an after cooler tube assembly that's maybe $2,500, $1,500. It's cheap insurance over the years to do that. Um, heat exchangers and after coolers will last a long, 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 long time with anodes in these. If the anodes fail, then the next thing that starts to corrode is the weak link of whatever that cooler is made of. Silver solder, tin, uh, copper, uh, Cooper Nickel is very, very good. It's a very, very good product today that they use in most tube and bundles. Um, that after cooler is an aluminum housing. So if you don't have anodes in there, you still can have galvanic corrosion um, take place inside that housing. So that's my recommendation is to replace all of your anodes. Let's just give you a length to cut it off to make it simple. One inch. Cut this off. So put one in that's an inch and a half, cut it off one inch. If we look at it one more time, inch and a half right to the base. So if you cut this off at one inch, you might be able to buy these at an, a layer that's one inch. And what I would do, if you're not real sure of exactly what you're doing, take one of these to your local marine store. They'll have them in stock and say, I want one of these diameters with an anode in it. That's what I want. And they come as one piece. You can buy the individual pieces or you can buy it as a set. And I would just say, I need three of these, inch and a half long, two inches long, whatever they have in stock. This diameter and this diameter is about three eighths of an inch, something like that. That's about what the diameter of that anode is. This anode, because it's a larger thread, is half an inch. And half an inch probably won't fit in there. I'm gonna go see if I can slip this up inside one of those passageways and I'll let you know. And the answer is nope. This will not fit. It's bigger than the threads of one of these. So you have to have an anode that's for this application. And I believe these are quarter inch pipe plugs. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's what that size would be for the anode. And yes, it's threaded on the inside. So this actually unthreads. So if I put this in a vise and I grab this with a pair of pliers, I can unthread it. And that way I can change just this piece. You can do that each year if you want. A little bit of Teflon tape on the threads um, and just lightly seat these. So what I always say is I always turn these in until they get snug. And then I do a quarter turn, no more than a quarter turn. So do not crank these in tight with a wrench. Just bring them into their snug till they just start to get snug and then no more than a quarter of a turn, okay? Because you don't want to split the housing. That's another thing that novices will do, okay? Well, I hope this uh, helps you understand how to backfit the anodes into an older, um, these are from the 90s. Uh, they are the TAMB 30 series engines. I'm not positive a 42 series or a 41 series uses this type of system with this heat exchanger, but I know that the uh, TAMD 30 series ones came with drains, not anodes. The uh, EDC engines, the TAMD 44 or KMD 44, the TAMD 74s, um, any of the EDC engines, the first generation electronic control engines, all have anodes in them. It's just these for some reason that at that era that some of these engines, they put drains in instead of anodes. So if you want to backfit it, easy enough to do. Hopefully that helps you with this little tip and I'll see you in the next video.